Hi, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to walk through the acetoacetic ester synthesis. This synthesis sequence is very similar to the malonic ester synthesis and is based on a lot of the same chemistry. For that reason, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on how some of these things work or why we make choices that we do because I covered that in detail in my malonic ester synthesis video. So I would really refer you to that video. Uh, if you're watching this as part of the video series, uh, it's the one right before it, the, before this one in, in the series. The acetoacetic ester synthesis starts from a, an ester that's a derivative of acetoacetic acid. Uh, a common one that is used is ethyl acetoacetic acid. Right. Uh, ethyl acetoacetic acid. I'm sorry, ethyl acetoacetate. Uh, and we use this one because it can be prepared quite easily from a Claisen condensation of ethyl acetate, which is a fairly common ester. Sometimes it's used as a solvent, but here it, it's being converted into another compound. And just as a reminder of the Claisen condensation procedure, that you know, the reaction starts with uh, an ester. We use a base to deprotonate the ester. The base typically matches the alkoxy group on the ester. And then after the Claisen condensation happens, we get uh, a product and we need to neutralize it because this product is acidic enough to react with the base present in the reaction mixture. The actual acetoacetic ester synthesis starts with this compound. I want my arrow to be a little bit larger here. Starts with this compound or similar compounds, or it doesn't actually have to be the ethyl ester, it could be different esters. Uh, it, and we'll do an example before the video ends of something that looks different, even uh, from a different Claisen condensation product. Right. So here is our overall reaction sequence. Like the malonic ester synthesis, it starts with by deprotonating at the alpha position and reacting that uh, with an alkyl halide through an SN2 alkylation. We then hydrolyze the ester and then the resulting acid gets decarboxylated. So we're going to walk through those steps, and then as I said, we're going to do a more complicated example. So as a reminder, you know, molecules of this type have a lower pKa than uh, aldehydes and ketones and esters, because the anion that forms after deprotonation has additional resonance stabilization. And the pKa here is around 12. Uh, and I apologize for not knowing the exact pKa value of ethyl acetoacetate. Once, like the malonic ester synthesis, we're going to choose a base that matches the alkyl group on the ester because we want to avoid nucleophilic substitution side reactions on this ester structure. Once we have the anion, it's time for the alkylation. And again, this is an SN2 reaction. So having a alkyl halide electrophile that is primary is going to be very useful for this process. And as occurs so many times uh, throughout our journey in organic chemistry, this is an SN2 reaction. As, as many alkylations are. Once the, the ester has been alkylated, it needs to be hydrolyzed. Again, the hydrolysis can happen in acid or base. And, you know, it's honestly up to the, the preference 
of the chemist who's doing the reaction, whether we have uh, acidic hydrolysis or base hydrolysis. And then that leads to a carboxylic acid. And carboxylic acids that are beta to another carbonyl group can undergo spontaneous decarboxylation when heated. And that is the final step of this sequence. And cheat a little with some copy and paste. Ester hydrolysis. And then all that this decarboxylation step needs is heat. Redraw my product a little bit. The mechanism of this decarboxylation step is a uh, concerted pericyclic reaction followed by a tautomerization. And I go over that in detail in my melonic ester synthesis video. So you should go watch that video if you want uh, to see the mechanism of this final decarboxylation step. So I also promised to do a different example. And so we're going to start um, with a different ester formed by a different clays and condensation. Right, so here we have methyl butanoate. And the clays and condensation product is this substituted ester. So it already has an alkyl group in that alpha position. And then we're going to walk through uh, a clazin or a malonic ester, I'm sorry, an acetoacetic ester sequence that looks like this. All right, what you might want to do now is pause the video and get a chance to work on this problem on your own uh, because I'm just going to move ahead towards the solution. So why don't you pause the video and then come back and see if your solution uh, matches mine. Right. So if you pause the video, welcome back. If you're just hanging in, uh, that's particularly fine too. All right, so we're going to look at uh, this malonic or this acetoacetic ester synthesis. Again, we're going to use sodium methoxide as our base because this is a methyl ester in the structure. And this compound still has that one acidic hydrogen here, so it can be deprotonated. In our next step, we're going to have our SN2 alkylation. Um, just once, I'm going to draw out the full structure of my alkyl halide electrophile. Uh, my arrow there, there. But I'm going to end up abbreviating it because when I have to redraw the structure here, that, that phenyl group is just not going to fit. It's not going to look pretty here. And then we work through hydrolyzing the ester. And in this case, I showed you hydrolysis conditions in aqueous acid. And you might have noticed up there that I, uh, this says heat. I'm not done copying and pasting yet because these structures are fairly complex. All right, so here we go. One of the things that, that I want to, to share with you is that under these conditions, this structure cannot be isolated. It, it is, once the carboc once the alpha, uh, the beta keto acid is formed, it undergoes spontaneous decarboxylation to the final ketone product. And so, as I have mentioned in the video on the malonic ester synthesis, very often chemists will combine the decarboxylation step into the hydrolysis step, especially if they're using acid, because the, the acidic hydrolysis often requires some heat to get going. And so with careful, uh, with careful control of the conditions, the decarboxylation reaction can also happen 
in the same reaction vessel, and of course that means you have to do fewer isolations and, and purifications, uh, and everybody's happier about that situation. Thank you for watching this video on the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Again, uh, the some of the mechanisms and the rationale behind the choices are covered in more depth in the melonic ester synthesis video, which is on a very similar uh, synthesis. And because these two are so similar, I'm going to put the link to the melonic ester video in the description below. So thank you for watching.